This week, we're going to be talking about material shortages and why you should really care. Welcome to the show where we tackle the tough questions submitted by installers, project managers, estimators, ICT personnel, and anybody in the industry. We are connecting at the human level so that we can connect the world. If you're watching this show on YouTube, would you mind hitting the subscribe button and the bell button to be notified when new content is being produced? If you're listening to us on one of the audio platforms, would you mind giving us a five-star rating? And if it's not a five-star rating, shoot me an email. Let me know what I need to do to make us a five-star rated show. Those two simple steps helps us take on that algorithm, which helps get the message out to more people so we can educate, encourage, and enrich the lives of people in the ICT industry. Thursday nights, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What are you doing? I do a live stream on, on TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, once I can figure that one out, where you get to ask your favorite RCDD, well, that would be me, questions about installation, certification, project management, estimation, even career advice. But I, I hear you now, but Chuck, I'm dropping my truck home at Thursday nights at 6 p.m. I can't, I can't be watching a video. I'll crash. That's okay. I record them and they're put on the website at letstalkcabling.com. So you can go back and watch any of the previous ones as well as any of the previous episodes as well. And finally, while this show is free and it will always remain free to the end user, if you would like to show your support for this program, click on the QR code and you can buy me a cup of coffee. Those who buy me a cup of coffee will get a free podcast sticker. You can even schedule 15 minutes with me one-on-one after hours, of course. And also, um, we're still also looking for corporate sponsors. If you're a corporation and your your line with, is with educating, encouraging, enriching, reach out to me. As I mentioned, if you've been in paying attention over the last two years, there's been some material shortages. It showed up in chips. It showed up in cabling. It showed up everywhere. And it's causing us to think outside the box and have to deal with these kinds of issues as it impacts our profits, impacts our schedules, impacts customers' perceptions. So I wanted to address it. So I reached out to one of my my, my good friends who has a really good taste in places to eat, by the way, I might mention. Uh, He's got a really unique view because he's kind of like in the middle. He's in between manufacturers and contractors, and, and he's got experience on both sides. So I, I asked him if he'd come on the show and talk to us about material shortages, and he said yes. Yes. So welcome to the show, Mr. Anthony Romeo from Wise Components. Anthony, how you doing today, buddy? I'm doing terrific, Chuck. Thanks for having me, and uh, hello all who's listening to Let's Talk Cable. Knowledge is definitely power. Yes, I like to hear that. You know, I've never asked you, do you go by Anthony or do you go by Tony? Yeah, my dad, who's 88, goes by Tony and I go by Anthony. Just okay. uh, always that case. <laughs> I think I asked you that last time. You, this is actually your second time on the show. Yes. Yeah, I, I appreciate you coming on. So like I said in the in the intro, you've got a really, before we get into those questions, for those who may not are new to the audience and may not have seen you on the previous one, Tell us a little bit about you and a little bit about who the company you work for. So that way they understand why you are so knowledgeable about this. Well, I'll try to keep it short. Uh, You know, coming from uh, the military, not knowing anything about ICT community, I had, um, you know, a direction of going to serve country and that changed and it was going to go into the security field. And then that changed uh, because I met my wife and, uh, her father, who uh, 40 plus years in AT&T, Lucent, and Avaya, the whole mix, and introduced me to the wonderful world of telecom and uh, structured cabling. Uh, with that said, he introduced me to a contractor. Uh, I gravitated towards the contractor, mainly in the security space, and then learning the structured cabling design implementation project management. Um, for a couple of years, I was doing that, running jobs, uh, mainly through the New York City metro area. 
uh, working with many manufacturers. Along comes uh, Comscope. Uh, many people that are listening to your show probably know who they are. And uh, they offered me an opportunity to work with their organization. And I served nearly a decade there. Uh, many different roles, local territory, strategic accounts, global accounts, and uh, was really excelling there and had a great career path. However, um, in walks into my life, uh, one of my current business partners, and with this great opportunity to invest in a solid distribution company known as Wise Components. Uh, Wise Components has been around, or I should say incorporated since 1975, uh, serving the New York tri-state area uh, with uh, quality products. Um, it actually stems back further than that before it was incorporated. It was established in Bronx, New York on Westchester Avenue, hence the name uh, Westchester Industrial Supply. Electronic components didn't roll off the tongue, so <laughs> Wise had it in 1975, October 31st. So we just celebrated a birthday. My happy birthday. So I got some questions for you about material shortages from different perspectives, right? So the first perspective is, since you've got some, some background experience in this, right? What's a good way for a contractor to deal with material shortages? Well, I, I would say it's a, it's a couple of different ways to approach that, right? The first thing is over communicate. Uh, that is the key. Um, at Wise Components, not just myself, a lot of the key uh, individuals that are working not only with the contractors and the end users, but the consultant community, understand what's on the horizon uh, of these projects, the material that's going to be needed uh, months out so that we as distribution and as a partner with that relationship, we could um, you know, make the difficult decision of do we bring that material into stock without payment, right? So if we get all um, the confirmations from the contractor, the consultant, the end user, all the players involved early on in the midst, and that's not just go for wise components, that's just anybody, over communicate is key to success. Um, so that was the first thing. Dealing with quality um, partners, such as Wise Components from a distribution standpoint, but also Wise, like many distributors out there, quality distributors out there are working with manufacturers that are reputable, you know, people that stand behind the products that they're manufacturing. So you get that additional support. Everything's wonderful when, you know, all the boxes are checked and everything's going well, but then what happens when Stuff hits the fan, you know. Do you have a partner at the table that is going to go that extra mile for you? So again, just to recap, over communicate and dealing with quality service providers and quality products are going to help mitigate some of the challenges that are out there. You're not always going to be able to, um, you know, be there in the clutch, but you try to, right? Uh, because there's things that are thrown in the 25th hour that you could, you know, not foresee. Yeah, I'm going to dive in a little deeper on, on two of those key things you, you talked about. You said communicate. And I've said this for years, right? We work in the communications industry, but we suck at communicating, right? <laughs> um, yeah. And, and a lot of people don't really understand what communicate really means. It's more than just talking to somebody. It's, you know, in order to communicate, you have to have a transmitter, you have to have a receiver and you have to have a message that goes between the two. In order to communicate, you have to listen. So sometimes communicating means just shut up and listen to what the customer's saying, right? So what when you, when you say when you say communicate over communicate for shortages, are, are you are you talking about emails? Are you, are you talking about uh, what, are you, what are you specifically are you talking about? Smoke signals, emails, carrier pigeon, <laughs> whatever works for you. <laughs> Having project kickoff meetings. Uh, it, everybody's everybody does when you're building out a project, right? But nobody, or I should say, not many people do the preemptive strike and have those meetings all like so that they can see the chessboard and understand when all these different pieces are moving around. You understand what your is what is going to be your possible contingency if some if this falls through, 
how are you going to get around it? And I could give you one example, working with a, uh, a global consultant that had asked me um, about uh, basket tray. And they were working with two projects, one in your neck of the woods truck and the other in Las Vegas, Nevada. And the consultant is dynamite, highly touted, um, but they don't know what the raw material shortages look like for all these manufacturers, nor do I, right? However, when you reading a spec as a contractor, you say, you know, part A goes into part B, part C, and then that's it. And I will not deviate, right? Unless you put forth submittals um, or requests for information to see if you could provide something else. But being that I've, as a company, as Wise Components, we can we uh, communicate with the consultant community as much as the contractor community to try to stay ahead of the curves uh, that are being thrown at everybody th these days, right? It's with the supply chain. So with this example, uh, the consultant spec a certain manufacturer. We are not a designer, though we have RCD on staff and we have other uh, accolades and people that have been with us since the 80s that are very experienced in copper and fiber. Um, we are not taking the place of a designer, just to be clear, 100%. Um, however, because we're so close when the rubber meets the road about making those deliveries happen, you have to have a contingency. And that's where WISE comes in. In this case, we were able to identify another manufacturer that was able to meet the lead times and, and we were able to deliver it. And again, talking about what I mentioned before, quality, quality manufacturers, right? So because we were working with a premier line, they were able to deliver it to both Tampa and Las Vegas sites no harm, no foul, no additional costs. Contractor got the, the cable tray. And as you know, and many of your listeners know, something as simple as cable tray, it could just ruin the whole the whole job. That's the foundation of the job right there. You can't put the cable yeah. tray in, you can't pull the cable. Right. And then it's the domino effect and right. it's and it just continues to lag and lag and lag. So right. by doing that, we're we're providing that additional service to our customers and we're trying to get ahead of it so that's why i'm saying about over communicating so so you also mentioned about reputable manufacturers right so my question to you is let's say uh, you're a contractor and you're how do you what what points do you use to figure out if a manufacturer is reputable or not because let's be honest there's a lot of them out there and you already mentioned some really good top tier manufacturers right yeah but uh you can't you can't necessarily go by marketing because some of the manufacturers may not no. be necessarily top tier. <laughs> They'd be super great at marketing, but yet no, it, uh, you know, one of the legacy the legit... manufacturers who's been around for years, the old school, they're not good at this whole interweb thing. So what what how could you evaluate to see if a if a manufacturer is so, reputable or good? So in addition to myself at Wise, we have many terrific people that are very knowledgeable on the logistics side is one in particular my, one of my business partners john conti he's been with the company since 1986 started out in purchasing you know and worked his way throughout the chain and and bought the comp bought into the company in 2002 so um mainly is uh now our coo uh he and i amongst other people we take a look at logistics where are they manufacturing the, the product? Where are they sourcing their raw materials? Um, their finances, you know, how are they funding these these uh, evolutions? You know, um, that's just a few. Um, what are their additional resources that are in the field so that when there is a problem, because every manufacturer has problems, do they have technical managers or they just have sales reps? Now. Mind you, there are many good sales reps out there and they wear many hats, but not are all equal. Right. So that's a whole other story that you get into. So right. if there's sales reps out there that are repping these lines that have the chops, the technical ability, you know, that's something that we look at. And being that we 
we're not as uh, big as maybe some of the nationals or national players out there. We still do millions of dollars every year. So we're a target audience to some of the smaller manufacturers out there and the offshore brands. I could tell you, honestly, I'm getting solicitations three, four times a week by various brands of cable, various brands of tools, test equipment, enclosures, you name it. And I, I kind of put my hand up and I say, we're good. Thank you very much. And then sometimes, no, you know, you have to look, you know, just because you're the new kid on the block doesn't necessarily mean that you don't, you don't have your stuff in order. So that's why it goes back to where are their logistics set up? How are their finances set up to support that? And, and you, and you peel back the layers of the onion to see, if it stinks or not, right? That, that's a great answer. That's a great answer. And I, I would add to that, you know, check with um, your fellow peers, right? So if you're an estimator, you're going to bid meetings with other estimators from other companies and stuff, and it's okay to talk to them. I mean, it's it's absolutely fine to talk to them. And, and you can find out a lot about manufacturers just by having conversations with them, right? And my, my point is, don't don't choose a, if, if a manufacturer rep you or not, by if somebody says, oh, well, you know, I did a project when, since you mentioned basket tray. I did a project one time where, and I won't say who it was, um, right. where I ordered, you know, I called them up and said, look, I've won this job. You bid me the price on X amount of thousands feet of basket tray. I need to make, they want, the customer wants to make sure it's in stock because they want to move right away. And they, 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 the, the manufacturer said yes. And then when I ordered the, placed the order, literally 24 hours later, there was no product available. That can happen to anybody. Right. That can happen to anybody. You know, there's Absolutely. always, there's always going to be a one-off, right? So you got to kind of also look at their history, right? If, if they have a track record of doing that, oh, they messed me up on this job and this job and that job and this job over here. Well, now you're starting to see a pattern. Any manufacturer can have a bad day. You know, I mean, you think about it. Oh, you're, putting out a, you're putting out a million product, I mean, you know, a, million, a million widgets. The law absolutely. of averages is going to catch up with you sooner or later. Even if you have a 99.99999% everything's right, there's still that 0. 0.0001 multiplied by, you know, however millions of products you're, you're making. Things can well, still happen, you know. Oh, absolutely, Chuck. And I and I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, one of the things that I left off the table when we were talking about uh, to try to stay ahead of the curve with, with supply chain is, you know, the partnerships that you create out in the ICT community, are, it's not about just company, it's about people, right? We have a lot of dynamite people at Wise Components and they go the extra mile, you know? And the other thing that sets us apart from some of the other players out there is that we're agile. You know, my phone is not ringing off the hook. Hey, can I get this approved? No, you know, and you look at certain companies, the way that their operation is they have checks and balances. Not, not to say that we don't because we're an ISO house, you know, uh, you know, so we have a third party come in and check us that our standing operating procedures are, you know, adequate and, and uh, above in most cases. So that being said, it's about the people though. And, and yeah. having that partnership, that relationship so that when you're in the, when you're in the trenches, you know, the person that's standing to the right of you is going to help you, you know, get through it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and you know, and I'm glad you mentioned that because the people skills isn't just between an engineer and manufacturer or distribution. That's also for the technician in the field. Right. And what do I mean by that? If you're a technician in the field and you build that personal relationship with the customer, you're going to find that that customer develops a trust for you. And when they put out a bid, they'll say, look, we'll give you the, we'll give you, you don't have to bid it. We'll give you this job if you can put, you know, Joe Smith on this project, because we like the way Joe does this job. The, the yeah, so personal I, skill works all the way through the spectrum. I could tell you from my own experiences that, you know, some of the larger companies that we deal with and companies that I've worked for that are much larger and even the military they don't always look at the boots on the ground for guidance and information. You know, being a smaller company, we have our finger very close to the pulse. So, you know, we get that firsthand information. 
Whereas I've been in meetings with some of our uh, sales people with the customer and the customers say, well, you know, um, the Acme Global Corporation distribution came in with the senior executive vice president and uh, assistant managing director and, and, you know, chief operating officer, blah, 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 and told me that Joe, who I've worked with for 20 years, is not retiring, but we're putting him on a different account. And they look at them like, well, I've been working with Joe for 20 years. He, Joe's my guy. Yep. And now you're just removing him because you didn't listen to what Joe had to say. Well, you right. know, so right. again, right. going back to being agile and, you know, taking the information from the field is very important to us at WISE. And um, it, it helps us, you know, grow um, tremendously. Absolutely. And the and the key there, what, what makes that personal relationship grow is, especially, again, no matter what level you talk at, technician to a customer, an estimator to a distribution, estimator to manufacturing, whatever, whatever, whatever role you're really looking at is you really, the, 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 what builds the foundation is learning the customer's expectations and knowing how to exceed them. Right. Absolutely. Um, this material shortage is causing some people to fall down on that. Yeah. And they can't meet expectations because there's not enough, the, the, you know, my rack, I waited two months to get it from the time I ordered it. I, I ordered a router and they told me it's going to be two months for it to get there because of the chip shortage. You know, the things happen, things happen. Right. How, what can, as a, as a estimator in the field or an installer in the field, you already talked about communicating. What's, what's the way yes. that you can make sure so, you still hit that expectation. If you, so here's something that it might sound like blasphemy to some in the community out there, but we talked about, communication we talked about quality partnerships and and having somebody being that you know go to um the thing that i was going to say like blasphemy is that in the decades that i've been doing this you know let's just say corning has been the de facto of fiber right but they're one of many glass manufacturers out there so you have afl fujikora you have sumitomo and others that provide quality glass and they actually provide it to the other manufacturers out there based upon their specifications and needs, right? So for many years, if it was specified by either the end user and or consultant that it is only going to be this product and this product only, it would not deviate from that. But now I'm not seeing that. It's like, well, you don't have Comscope, you don't have Leviton. It's not just us. It's, you know, other players out there that are providing the materials because you can't cover the, the gamut. Amazon can't cover the gamut of right. things out there that, that come up. So something has drastically changed, at least in my experience, that consultants and end users, because they're feeling the pain of hourly labor costs and and people just sitting on job sites waiting for material they can't have that right so they have an operational and a capital construction budget that they have to meet no questions asked so those quality there's a lot of quality manufacturers out there so there's been more considerations in the recent i would say three to four years than I've ever seen before. And I don't know yeah. if, if you experienced that, but I know I, think, I have. <laughs> I think I think the for those who may not have ever been in the estimating realm, right? A lot of when something gets written into a spec, a lot of times it's usually for one of two reasons, right? Either it's that's just the way we've always done it. Somebody wrote that spec and they copied and pasted it over and over again and stuff. Or there again, there was some kind of a relationship there between the local sales guy for that manufacturer and that particular company, right? When you when you look at products, I'd say probably ninety five percent of the time they are interchangeable. I mean, if you want Cat five E cable, Cat five E cables, Cat five E cable, is there some? Are there some better five E cables? Absolutely. Or if it's if it meets the standards, you're okay, right? Um, but the thing you run into is 
it's only it's that five percent of the time where a manufacturer will say, "Well, look, our cable can only our cable will do this functionality, and nobody else can do that functionality." Then you got to that's when you get locked, pigeonholed into that. You got to stick with that one manufacturer. So if if you're having a shortage, and that's it's not one of that five percent. Again, it boils down to maybe being able to shift to a different manufacturer. You you mentioned the the glass manufacturer. There's only what three of them in the United States, I think, three or four that manufacture yeah. the glass for everybody else. Yes. You know? So well, you know. and, and that's the thing. So going back to the first statement made is over communicating. So if the consultant, the manufacturer, the end user, the contractor, distribution partner are all on the same page, you're not gonna have to worry about flipping anything to another brand where you're not going to have to worry about using another distribution partner, even though you'll, you'll love dealing with me and, and I don't have it. You know, you're not going to do that because we all were talking openly, honestly about, you know, project schedules. Right. Yeah. And yeah. what's on the horizon. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, there's, there's an old adage. Uh, my dad used to say it all the time and I'm going to, I'm going to butcher because I can't remember exactly how he used to say it, but <laughs> He used to say something to the effect of you can't play football if you don't know where the goal line is. Right. And that's about setting Amen. that expectation. And then communicating along the way would be like when you're in a huddle, and you're talking about the game plan every single play and you're making adjustments as you get down because you might find that the opponents might be now they're starting to see that you're starting to throw a lot. Maybe they're going to start putting more pressure on the quarterback. And then, so now you may have to adjust your game plan, to maybe do some more running and that's keeping everybody in that loop. And I don't and, even I don't even watch football, and I use the football analogy. Mark <laughs> that one down, right? I yeah. hate football, but it's okay. a great analogy, right? Because you change your game plan as you get closer, and you keep everybody involved, and you will cross that line. It's when you don't yeah. communicate with it is when you find yourself literally on that. I always line. I always use football because it's a team sport, and you got eleven people on the line, and you know everybody knows the quarterback, the receivers, the running backs, but you forget about the tackle you know, on the offensive line, they're, they're blocking, you know, they're making moves. The, you know, these massive <laughs> creatures are six, seven, six, eight, 300 plus pounds. They're moving the line and they're blocking and tackling so that people can get into the end zone. And that's like us, like nobody, know the, nobody cares to know who the offensive tackle is, right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's the distribution partner. That's somebody that's, either hiking the ball, delivering it to the quarterback. The quarterback's either the, you know, rising star contractor that's going to deliver it on time, defect free, right? We're the, the afterthought that, hey, we're part, we're going to get that Super Bowl ring because we're part of the team. <laughs> but we're not, you know, we're not the water boy. You know, right. water's important, but we're not the water boy. But we are on the field. We are out there. And that's why I said before, if we can over communicate with each other, you know, the contractor, the consultant, the end user, distribution partner, any strategic players that are involved. When I mean by that, anybody that's doing uh, DSIM and they, they need to upload software or POE uh, devices, you want to make sure that they're all, you know, marching to that same drumbeat because then it, it makes it for an easier, successful conversation right. and repeat right. the process. Yes. And, and hey, hey, don't forget to talk to the equipment manager to tell them to put the right PSI in the football, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that that's a New England thing I hear. <laughs> I, I heard that didn't transfer down to Tampa yet. Um, uh, but non nonetheless, like as as I was saying, communicate, use right. quality partnerships and, you know, um, be OK with making alternates. You know, you got to sub out every once in a while. And I hate to say it, but sometimes we're going to be the sub, you know, we're going to be substituted out because right. we weren't over communicating with our, with our partnerships. Therefore we're going to lose. Yeah. But the, the point, the, the point that I'm trying to get at is if everybody's on the same page, we're going to be successful together. Um, Absolutely. It, it's, and, and no manufacturer is better than the other these days. Uh, everybody's having their, their gripes, you know, Today, yeah. it's one, the other, you know, tomorrow, it's somebody else. Yeah. Material, the raw materials is is the key of the components, whether it be FEP, copper, glass, it's it's going to happen. So that actually kind of leads into my next question, right? I mean, what all materials are you seeing that's causing the shortage? I already mentioned the chip shortage. 
right? That's causing a delay in electronics and stuff like that. There, um, what other materials are are in shortage that, that could cause a contractor issues? Well, right now, what we've seen is um, the uh, Dupont Fabros uh, situation, and uh, they basically cornered the market. So all the uh, there used to be three providers of the Teflon, and now there's only one. So some manufacturers who will remain nameless were only working with one that was bought out and some were working with all three. So some are getting head of the line privileges with Teflon. Mm -hmm. So to make right. that, that correlation, um, the manufacturers that have bulked up on the raw materials, um, they, they are doing all right. They're doing, they're doing the right things in my opinion. Um, and I don't want to put anybody on blast. So I won't, I won't <laughs> no, say I, I keep this agnostic now. I, I don't talk yeah, about yeah. manufacturers. Um, but also a lot of manufacturers have seen the writing on the wall early on in the process. And they did bulk up right. on raw materials and, and because to address shortages, distribution partners, like I talked to, regional partners out there that are on the West coast and the Midwest, just to, you know, check the pulse and, and keep the big players honest, you know, out there. And, um, you know, I too, we've bulked up on our inventory. We went from a turn of eight to a turn of 12, you know, to support additional uh, material shortages. So, you know, it, you know, for us, we've got several million dollars more in inventory, which I, if anybody's out there, we'll sell it to you, you know? That's money. So, that, people don't realize that's money sitting on the warehouse floor that's not making oh, yeah. interest, you know? And, and yes. you, you, mentioned the, you mentioned a term, and I want you to – I've heard it before, but I know people who might be on the field side may not have heard of it. Turn of eight, turn of 12. What does that actually mean? So basically um, what you're looking at is what, what you sell. And so my turn of eight might be different than my competitors, but – Based on historic data, it shows what we need to keep into inventory uh, to successfully provide that material to our clientele our, on historic data. So now upping that to a turn of 12 where we've increased the, the amount of inventory that we hold right, in right, stock. Right. And that's where contractors, they, they don't understand and they, they, don't, they don't have patience, right? Because they, they're so used to calling you up and saying, Hey, I need, I need a hundred thousand feet of my of cap six, a on my, on my warehouse tomorrow. And in for years, that was not an issue, right? Just boom, it would be there. So contractors don't have that. Don't seem to have that patient. Don't realize the, 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 what you're doing to help alleviate those material shortages, because when a, when a distributor or a manufacturer sees something coming down and they want to bulk up for it, that money is sitting on the floor in the warehouse, not in the bank making interest. Right. So, you know, Absolutely. A, lot of people, yeah. a lot of, a lot of people who outside of that loop don't, don't really. Well, catch. that's the thing, Chuck. So like with the contractors, they, they understand that they get paid from the general contractors or sometimes right. even the end user. Um, a bulk of our business, we sell probably the 80, utilizing the 80, 20 rule, 80% of our clientele is comprised of CWA and IBEW contractors, and even some non-union as well. But that's the bulk of who we at Y sell to. The other 20%, we do have some substantial end users that buy direct that are, you know, at, at uh, either dealing with a, another distributor. We're not taking that business away from the contract community. They were going to, you know, uh, an online platform and buying patch right. boards or whatever, uh, whatever oh. it is. Yeah. So we're competing with them on that, but we give, we extend terms, whether it be 30 days, 60 days, 120 and, and some of them come up on birthdays on, in certain cases. Uh, <laughs> um, but, the manufacturers, they also have terms with distribution, as many people know, and our terms are not as favorable as the contractors. Our terms are 30 days and right. you will not see, maybe you'll get 45 with some of the relationships and partnerships you have, but between 30 and 45 is, is, is our area, you know, and that's, that's what we have to do. But 
the contractor world, it's 60 to 90. Right. And, you know, it's it. That's what it is. And we try to work with our with our key partnerships out there so that it's not like, oh, you haven't paid us in 45 days. You're cut off. You know, we'll work with you. You know, we, we ensure because we are a, a privately owned and operated company. And that's been doing this, you know, for over 50, you know, 50 years. Mm -hmm. So we understand the importance and the need. We're not, you know, in our ivory tower saying, oh, you know, they're 46 days, cut them off. They can't buy electric tape, you know, and some people do that and that's their business model, not mine. Right. Um, we, we try to work with our partnerships out there to ensure that when they're, you know, up against it, we're there as a partnership. And then go back to what I earlier said, you have to have those quality relationships. You, you know, you hit on a really great point. Cause one of the being on all the social media platforms that I'm on, right. And I put stuff out there and, and the, I'm trying to reach the younger audience, trying to educate them, encourage them and, and make this industry seem, you know, more sexy. TikTok, TikTok, I, TikTok. I, well, hey, hey, I'm <laughs> telling you, I'm, that's, that's my, that's my most, my biggest platform yeah. right now, TikTok. Yeah. And, um, and the thing is, you know, I got people brand new to the industry who, who don't really know a whole bunch and they, they just know one thing, right? They're like, well, why should I go to wise components to buy some cable when I go, when I can go to Lowe's and buy the same thing. And you hit on the key component right there. Again, relationship, right? When you walk into, you know, wise components and you buy that cable and you, because you, I got a relationship with you, right? And you know that this particular customer likes this. Well, no, you don't want to use that cable because here's going to be the issue, right? And again, again I love where you're going. I, I, and the, I and love the payment terms <laughs> and the payment terms. Try saying that to the sales associate in, in the big box store. They're going to say, yeah, yeah. yeah, sure. That's going to be work. Yeah, that's going to work. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> uh, Ken Langone. What, you get what you pay for. Listen, you know? Ken Langone has built an amazing empire of Home Depot. It's a wonderful company. Absolutely. Uh, when you need certain items, you go there, you walk in, you walk out. However, there has never been a time where I walk in to any one of the Home Depots or Lowe's or any big box store where somebody's there and it says, oh, you don't want to use that. You want to use this. Right. And Because they have that innate knowledge to be able to educate because right. that's what it is. And right. you say it, let's talk cable and it's knowledge is power. Right. And I could go to any one of the salespeople, and I, I'm not going to reference all John Gallicano, Sandra Morris, whoever it is it, that's working it wise. And they'll be like, well, yeah, you can use that 5E cable, but you want to use six. And here's why, depending on the application. Right. And that doesn't happen if you go into a big box store. They're going to say, thank you for the sale. My, my favorite thing to do when I go in. When I go, I go in big box, having a, a, a homestead, I'm always in a big box store buying something. And when I'm in a big box store, I always go by the tool place to look at all the tools. And I right. always stop by the low voltage section. Right. And in more than one occasion, I, the, the, you know, the person who's responsible for that area, you know, they'll come over and say, can I help you with anything? And I'll say, yeah, I'm looking for, I'm looking for some USOC jacks. And they're like, what? Yeah. I, I don't think we carry that. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, again, that's, it's this, you're getting when you pay. Yeah. If you know what you're buying and still, you know, just doing a onesie or twosie. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. But, if, you know, if this, if you're a hobby, if you're somebody that's doing this as a hobby or yeah. it's a, it's a one-off, I get it. It serves a purpose, but if this is your business and you want to talk about what we said before about trusting and relying on how are you going to get, how as a contractor, how are you getting repeat business? If, the customer can't rely on you to deliver on time. You just, you just, you just made me remember something. I hadn't thought about this in years. Brand new estimator, right? I just came out of the field and I was estimating a project and I don't even remember who it was. And if I did, I wouldn't say who it was anyway. And I was estimating this project and I sent my price over to my, my local distribution. We, I didn't have a wise components in the, in the DC area. Okay. I had to go to, uh, at the time we were using, um, um, CSC a lot, right? Yeah. So I sent this bid over to CSC and the inside sales rep, who at this point only knew me for about four, eight weeks or whatever, but we're starting to get a good report going. And it was a, it was a girl, actually. She called me up and says, hey, I don't want to be nosy, but who's the end user? And I'm like, 
I don't know if I want to say that, right? And I was like, you know what, whatever. The end users, you know, ABC construction. It wasn't obviously ABC right, construction, right. but you get the idea. And she goes, I thought so. I thought so from the bill of materials. That's who that was. I'm going to tell you right now, that's the wrong cable. That's not the cable they ordered. That's not the cable they want. And she says, here's the cable that they wanted. And sure enough, I had misread the, the RFQ and I was off. They wanted the, they wanted the, the Cat5 Biggie, not the Cat5 <laughs> Little <League. laughs> Right? So- I, I won the job. And thank God that, you know, again, that the person at Home Depot is not going to know that. They're the your your people in distribution, they're they're plugged in to the things that are going on in that area. And they can yeah, help you solve what, those kinds of issues. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's yeah. that's key. Having having a partnership is key to success. Yeah. Um yeah. one final question on material shortage. The the what I like to call the the, the tunnel of material shortage. Terminal. Are we in the beginning of this tunnel? Are we in the middle of this tunnel? Are we starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel? Uh, great question. Though it's hard to determine any, you know, true answer to that question, from my own experiences in this world, I am from the you know, the, the news that I read and I receive from many different manufacturers. I think we still got a long way to go. I honest, honest to God, I think that uh, there's still a lot of unknowns that are going on with a few things, whether it be copper, uh, the Teflon FEP, um, you know, you look at, you know, not to get off on a tangent, but what's going on with um, AI and uh, not AI, uh, automobile industries. Oh, it's right, getting right. turned upside down on its head, but lithium, mercury, copper right, are all needed for, General Motors, you know, Honda, every one of your car manufacturers and this, from the state of New York to the state of California, they're putting bills in place that new cars come 2035 are only going to be, you know, EV. So now all these car manufacturers are preparing and they're going to be chipping away at supplies that they never needed before. Right. That we in the ICT community have needed and do use. That's you know, a great so point. I mean, the other information that I get, and and I didn't mention this uh, to the listeners, but we have a whole OEM division that we're an extension of major end users procurement chains. So in addition to the ICT communities, we're getting asked from these specific end users for all types of products. You know, and we're doing stocking packages for them. And it's, you know, it could be, it could be test tubes. It could be rivets. It could be certain styles of papers for blood analyzing machines. I mean, it's all varies, Mm -hmm. but so, and the reason why I bring this up is because we're talking to these commodities managers around the globe in 20, uh, 28 countries we deal with, uh, you know, from that. So we're getting that feedback. So it's not like, oh, you know, I'm living in my bubble in my box and, this is, a, I'm just saying, again, from right. from my perspective on the information that we're receiving, that's what it looks like that we're still not in the infancy stages, but we're still pretty much. We're in the middle of this to time. Go. We're in the middle of this yeah. time. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. And, I, and I trust I trust your opinion because, like I said, you're in there fighting the fight and you're seeing it from both sides. So if you say we're in the middle of the tunnel, I, it makes sense to me because, I mean, there's, there's some uh, manufacturers out there that, you know, they have, you know. 12 14 16 18 month lead time on cable oh yeah you know just it's it's out there it just it truly is and then another shortage too that that we haven't really touched base on and uh, it is uh for a period of time there i don't know if it's still the case kevlar right for put inside the fiber yeah. there there's manufacturer having to swap out some of the the, the you know not use kevlar anymore because it's not as available and trying different different types of things for that for the strength member inside of fiber and stuff so and that's going to change that the effects doesn't necessarily affect the performance but it might affect the termination process and how you work with it and stuff so so we have it's a learning yeah. process it definitely is i mean and there's and again I, just to recap over communicating quality partners and quality products and you know don't be afraid of you know deviating from a solution that you know there's other solutions out there uh, you know, 
lose fast is what I tell people, you know, it, you know, don't waste anybody's time. High speed, low drag. <laughs> that's, it. That, that's why you and i have our heads shaved because we're yeah. high speed low drag buddy <laughs> yeah i was told grass doesn't grow on a busy street <laughs> that too that too <laughs> well you're a wealth of information as always and i appreciate you coming on um i think this is going to actually shed the light for a lot of people i really do because it's, it's something we got to deal with yeah no definitely uh proper planning prevents poor performance so hopefully you picked up something new or a way to deal with the material shortages. Cause it sounds like from my expert that we're going to be dealing with this for a while until next time. Remember knowledge is power. That's it for this episode of today's podcast. We hope you were able to learn something. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Also leave a rating so we can help even more people learn about telecommunications until next time. Be safe.